How much asphalt and concrete and are all the costs being considered? The business outlook in the state's core counties. Can cooperation complement competition in the decades ahead? Put another way, are there prudent limits to regional rivalry? A special edition of Arkansas Week, one-on-one -on -one with the director of Metroplan in a moment. Local broadcast of Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest major newspaper, bringing you local, national, and international news since 1819. By the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for a special edition of Arkansas Week. This will be a program about central Arkansas, but believe it or not, it's also a program about all of Arkansas. For many of the questions that confront the Little Rock metropolitan areas already are presenting themselves in the booming northwest corner of our state, have for a long time, and now in the steadily growing northeast. The Lower Delta and South Arkansas, what will the state's increasing urbanization mean for those regions? Our guest for this special edition is Tab Townsell, former mayor of Conway, now executive director of Metroplan, the Council of uh, Local Governments in Pulaski and the surrounding areas. areas. Mr. Townsell, thanks very much for being with us. My pleasure. Uh, of course, the elephant in the room almost literally you know, is 30 crossing, the massive proposed uh, expansion of Interstate 30 through downtown North Little Rock and Little Rock. Now, as we tape our broadcast on June 27th, you've, Metroplan's board will meet tomorrow. Yes. Uh, another step in the progress toward the agency amending its, its own plan to accommodate the highway department's recommendations or as whatever compromise may result, there's already been some, you expect any is it reasonable to expect this project to go forward and pretty soon? I expect it to go forward pretty soon. There has been a lot of disagreement on this project. It is something that's in one sense fixing the sins of the past. Um, it is in another sense they're afraid of setting the wrong tone for the future. In the middle of that you've got decision makers that are faced with the reality of today. I think it's going to pass. There are some major concerns left out for the cities of Little Rock and North Little Rock in their negotiations for the betterments of what's actually built, how it actually appears from the, the streets that pass over it and underneath it, what it looks like in those cities. And those negotiations are going on. The action tomorrow by Metroplan's board is just to change, to slightly modify a plan amendment. Um, it, I'm expecting it to happen, uh, although the Citizens Advisory Committee voted 8 to 10 against doing anything. The major controlling aspect for the Metroplan Board is the TIP amendment, making sure it goes not just to the long-range plan, which is tomorrow, but the four-year work program, which is the green light to proceed coming from Metroplan. Yeah, the aesthetics of the project itself, when finished, are of one concern, but uh, to a Another group of citizens. Uh, the the aesthetics are decidedly a, a backseat issue. They they're concerned Absolutely. about the social ramifications, the cultural impact of a significant widening of the interstate will have on on the community. I think that's exactly right. The Quapaw Quarter, the old historic downtown concerns, the people that are, are impacted by what this could mean to the I six thirty corridor. They are very concerned about this, I think it's been termed the concrete gulch through downtown Little Rock and what that means. So that's primarily where the concern is coming. And yes, the betterment issues are a backseat to those major impactful concerns. Well, you, as, as a mayor of Conway, which has exploded in growth, former mayor of Conway, and it, it began its explosion in, uh, during your tenure, how do you accommodate 
that growth and minimize the social upheaval, cultural upheaval. I think that's the fair. Somebody, something's got to give, right? Something has to give. And I think what you're seeing is a, the emergence of a compromise uh, in this whole process. And you have to give credit to uh, the folks in Little Rock and North Little Rock in their back and forth negotiations with the highway department as to what actually the footprint of this 10 lane alternative, six lane and CDs, what the highway department prefers, what it actually looks like and acts like as it comes through those two downtowns, which is the only urban freeways in the state. There's none in Conway, there's none in Cabot, Benton, Bryant, not even Northwest Arkansas. This is the urban freeways if we have them in the state. So that impact is important. What you're gonna see though is in many cases, the through lanes don't look really any different than what actually is there today. Where the load is going to be carried is in the access roads, which currently don't even really exist in, in Little Rock, but they're gonna become more through lanes. They're gonna be on the ground. They're gonna be going through traffic lights. That's where your added capacity is gonna be. The, the laneage, the through laneage between 3rd Street and 9th Street are gonna be no wider than what is currently there. And actually in some cases, framed in more of a tunnel or box as they square off the shoulders than what currently exists. So an emergence of a compromise is there if they can make that alternative work. Can, can they? The question's going to be its impact, that design impact and those, ex, those, um, are, those side roads and its impact on the historic districts in Little Rock. If, if those do not cause too much of an impact there, it can work. You concerned? There is going to be some You're changes. You're mayor of Central Arkansas, in a way, but. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way, I, I take a back seat to the actual I understand. Mayor, <laughs> but I think there will be changes, but the historic district concerns are a federal historic district designation, and it's okay if some changes occur, if those changes become material to the, to the fabric of the area, the actual physical structures, then it could be considered a no-go from the federal uh, 106 section historic properties uh, law and nix some of the betterments and some of the design elements that Little Rock has been leaning towards. On to a slightly different take. Uh, no question that Central Arkansas is growing and has been. It is not growing at the pace that Northwest Arkansas has been growing Correct, for the yes. last 20 years, uh, owing to a number of things, one of them being Mr. Walton. Uh, where do you see, how are these two, these two SM, these metropolitan areas, are you eyeing one another warily? Uh, is there a competition here or one about to begin? I do not necessarily see it as a competition. Some people do uh, as a rivalry, but I do see that as um, something that we we do watch. I do track. I tracked it as a mayor sure. of the city of Conway. I'm still tracking it now in terms of sales tax growth, population growth. Um, so those things do happen. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If you can, if you can use the competition to better yourself, just like you're know, having a, a companion athlete that you're competing against, that competition makes both athletes better. I think that's more of the competition we're in rather than a, a negative stock competition. But yes, there are eyes in central Arkansas watching northwest Arkansas and vice versa. And I think that can be healthy if we use it to improve ourselves trying to be better competitors against northwest Arkansas. And how would that come about as you see it? It's investing, I think, in quality of place. What type of destination for, for uh, new residents, for existing residents, for existing business, for recruiting new businesses, how well do you present yourself as a quality of place for quality of life, for new businesses to come in and locate there or recruit their employees to? I think those type of things make us better communities and a region. And if a competition with Northwest Arkansas or Northeast Arkansas or wherever can help sharpen our approach to those things, I think it's, it's very healthy. How, how big a problem in your estimation is the, the continuing 
turmoil in the in the Little Rock public school system. How how much of a negative is that? I think that creates that has historically created a little bit of of bad blood within the region. That there are elements inside that who are looking at the turmoil and have historically that. Um, to a degree, hold the, the the outsides of the region, which are distinctly the the beneficiaries of some of the, uh, of the outflight, whether it's the outflight from the 60s and 70s or the 90s and the uh, 2000s or now. Uh, there's finger pointing back and forth. Well, you're just white flight. Well, you've got problems that you can't deal with. And I think that sense of we're in this together is harmed by the by those that historical baggage that we've claimed we have an identity crisis in central Arkansas and that we are not the old Twin Cities like we were in the 1950s and 60s. We're bigger than that. But seeing ourselves as a collective whole, rather than, thank goodness we're not Little Rock or North Little Rock or wherever, then or vice versa, we've got diversity and they don't. I think that's a problem to establishing that we're in this together, we are the the USS Little Rock, so to speak, all of us are, and we can't compete seriously with Northwest Arkansas, which does act like they're all part of the same family and all part of the same unit, although they you know, very competitively fight each other for different things, they recognize they're all in it together. And that's where we're struggling to establish ourselves as a single identity. Are we, though, completely all in it together when so much, uh, not that the necessarily shouldn't be, but you take the northwest corner up there, uh, the, the Fayetteville, or Washington, Boone, uh, Benton, Carroll even now, right? Madison. Uh, you've got a lot of people who are living, working in uh, southern Missouri, uh, western, o eastern Oklahoma. Let me get my geography straight. <laughs> eastern Oklahoma. Is there a sense of place up there that, that is decidedly different from what central Arkansas is into, or for that matter, northeast Arkansas, which has some of that same sort of And that's a fair question, ethic. because I'm standing down here, peering up there, looking at what seems to be more of a monolithic whole of a regional identity. I'm looking at the work they do in their regional council. I'm looking at the work they do in uh, their Northwest Arkansas Council, the Business Council, huh. and and see more of a, a sense of singular purpose there than I get the sense of here, but I'm more invested here. So I might be giving them the benefit of the doubt that I don't give our local area as much, but it appears to be that they are more together. I mean, they've got a, the Razorback Greenway uh, is 37 miles of connected trail running from Fayetteville to Bentonville that is something that we haven't done to the degree that they've done yet. Now granted, they had $16 million worth of, of um, Tiger Grant, came from the federal government uh, because they could get in together and apply for that, but they also had a match from the Walton family of a similar $16 million. But that type of coming together to do a joint regional project, we've not quite seen yet in central Arkansas. What needs to happen? I think we do have to consider ourselves, work on our identity issues, that we are Little Rock, whether that we are living in Cabot or Conway, Benton and Bryant, and that we need a recognition in the central part of the area that that's part of us too, that it's not just those people driving into our city that are going to threaten us with what they need with 30 Crossing. They're part of our economy. They're part of our sense of self. They're part of our sales tax collections that drive all of our cities. We've got to get a sense of identity. We've also got to invest in ourselves. Another thing that Northwest Arkansas does very good is each of the counties have a one cent sales tax and every city has a two cent sales tax. We have some of our counties that don't have a sales tax, like Saline County at all. Faulkner County has a half cent sales tax, which they do not divide with the cities. Pulaski County has a one cent sales tax, but the city of Little Rock has a cent and a half. The city of North Little Rock has a cent, trying to get a second cent. Right. Sherwood and Maumau each have one cent. So we're not investing in ourselves in our quality of place that they are doing in Northwest Arkansas. So even when they do catch us in population and projections show that they will, they're gonna be a better prepared place 
We're going to offer more to the citizens and businesses that look at locating there or looking to stay there than what we're doing in Central They Arkansas. would seem to. You're dealing here with Metro Plan, I mean, a half dozen county judges and what, 14, 15 municipalities, mayors, city councils, uh, uh, some of whom are fiercely protective of their own identity, even though, and not to single this one out, but it's, it's, it's increasingly difficult to know when you leave Little Rock and when you enter Benton or Bryant, Oxide, pass by. I mean, it's just one metro area there. And that people will, and not improperly, remind you, no, this is, well, you're in Benton. This is not Little Rock. Right. They're gonna, are they going to have to surrender pride, autonomy? What, to what extent here? I, I don't see that happening. Um, I believe in pride of place, just like you would have pride of place just in the city of Little Rock and, you know, the heights being distinguished from Hillcrest or vice versa. Right. Or other you know, areas, South Main as being distinct from downtown and both being distinct from up on the hill or further out west. I see it as a, as a similar situation, an analogous situation where you can have a sense of pride, but when times come to pull together, we have to do that on a better basis than what we currently do. Let's say you got all the sales tax revenue or the tax revenue that, 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 that you mentioned in terms, are we maxed out or came close to it? We taxed ourselves more, let's just put it that way. You have repeatedly used the term quality of place. How would you invest that money? Suddenly you've got a windfall. I think, what should go toward quality of place? I think we have to make sure our transportation systems work. I'm, I, I tend to use <coughs> I used as an analogy when I was mayor of Conway, and I think it still works, that if you start grading cities, and you can stretch this out into regions, that you have to, what do you get, what, what's required to get a D? If you grade cities and regions like you would students at that school, you do the basics, the very basic stuff. You get not an A, you get a D. You do water, you do police and fire. All those things that we think of as traditional standard uh, uh, services that municipalities provide. That's great. Do them good. We tend to be doing those decently now. We could make sure we meet raises, that we meet the capital requirements of our police departments and fire departments, our investments where we need to in, in utility services. All of that can be done. But that doesn't get us a C, a B, or an A. It's doing those things be above and beyond. Little Rock struggled for years investing in park services, particularly out west as the growth followed. The park investments didn't follow out. Uh, same way with public art, those quality of place things. You can say that you know, the amphitheaters are, are superfluous to your culture, yet they're critical if you're going to attract somebody to come in with a business and they expect to be able to attract people in here from around the nation they're not going to come here to a meat and potatoes town. They're going to come here for those amenities to follow their quality of life through your quality of place. So to become the best city or the best regions we can be, you have to make sure you invest up those latter of better grades. You have to put good, good money into planning, good money into parks and recreation, good money into public art, as well as the other things if you're going to grade out in the very highest circles of cities or regions across the nation that we're competing with. Do you, we, Northeast Arts of the Jonesboro Paragould area up there is really showing spirited growth at a, at, a, at a minimum. And of course there's Northwest and there's Central Arkansas. And in South Arkansas you have Pine Bluff, which even at this, the boosters of Pine Bluff are, you know, we've got problems, we're working hard to try to fix it. And then I guess in the South, East West Corner, you know, you've got El Dorado, which is moving along. But the trend in Arkansas is plainly, as elsewhere in the South, indeed, and elsewhere in the country, is greater urbanization, and and people are leaving the countryside simply because a they're not needed for farm work any longer, and the economic opportunities in, in manufacturing aren't there. Is this going to up the stakes even greater in what traditionally in Arkansas has been kind of a grudge match between rural and urban. I think so. Politically. And I think that's chosen not by the legislators in the country, caucus, country caucus or the urban caucus yeah. in our state legislature. I think that's chosen and that's, that, 
that battle's being fought um, upon high, sc high school graduation, where students decide whether they stay, find a job there in their hometowns in these rural areas. What we've seen for decade after decade was that our folks left and went north for decade after decade. Um, my parents left Arkansas and went to Chicago. We were just one of thousands of Arkansans that did that five decades worth as our population declined from the yeah. 20s to the 70s. California is still full of Arkansas. Californians Descendants. are yeah. still full of our folks. I mean, yeah. uh, my generation, I graduated from college in 1984. Texas, we were all headed to Texas. What we've seen is the emergence of these more urban areas, and that's the destination our kids are choosing to locate in. We're giving them an opportunity in Arkansas in these more urban areas to find the jobs, to build the lives they want by providing the quality of place, the quality of job, um, employment. The life that they choose can be found here rather than having to chase it outside of our state's borders. That's what urbanization and building great cities and great regions offers our state. Well, this integration, quality of place, economic opportunity, investment capital, all of it. Uh, obviously the key to, to, to getting more and more Arkansas young people to stay or for talented individuals elsewhere to come here. But th that's a real, that's a recipe. It's a pretty complicated recipe and it's expensive. It's expensive, but if you look at just, if we just compare ourselves and how much, and everybody's taxed too much, no matter where you go, no matter what you're taxed at, you're taxed too much. All of us feel that way. But if you look at famously red, conservative, Northwest Arkansas, collectively they tax themselves more so than we tax ourselves here. And they're building better community. Now they're not as big as we are yet, but collectively and you're the they're building of a better plan. place. <laughs> yes. But no, I, I that, didn't mean that's, that interrupt, that's my that. That's my advocacy is we've got to compare the products so that when they do catch us and get equal to us, we can sit on the shelf just as well as they can and shine just as well as they can such that we offer quality of place too. And we've got some great amenities here. We've just got to build on them and connect them and make them such that we offer our citizens first, who we have here, our graduates from high school and college, a great place to live and work and play, uh, but add to it and compare ourselves with the other great regions around the nation. And we've been benchmarking with our, with our, um, with our civic leaders for some time now. Those are going to accelerate because we need to beg, borrow, and steal the best ideas from around the nation and apply them right here and give ourselves the money to invest in ourselves to do what's best. And you don't make any bones about it. We need more money. We need more money. We don't have the issue of federal government. Most of our money comes right back and is spent in our, in our cities. And yes, some of these things are seem frivolous to you, but not to the next person, or to the next person and not you. Collectively, we do a better job and we make a better sense of place. How much of that would you spend on surface transportation? And I don't mean I-30 crossing. I think we have got to recognize that, for example, Markham Street is between my office and Little Rock City Hall. Little Rock City Hall was built in 1901. That street's been there as long as the city of Little Rock has been there. We can't always guarantee that our huge investment in freeways, and in a sense, we have to widen freeways as long as we build subdivisions the way we do. Freeways are a result of displaced land use decisions and street decisions. But if we keep building a region like that, at some point when gas gets to be $5 a gallon or unexpected changes come, we don't have an alternative to a car-driven culture. So I think we have to be careful to build a region that's retrofittable that would allow transit, that would allow people to walk and bike more than they used to. So we've got to be smarter. We, are, we have the, more, the most lane miles, fewest people per lane miles, way I should say this, fewest people per lane mile from the top 100 urbanized areas in the nation. The Little Rock urbanized area, which stretches into uh, three counties, I think, 
has the most, fewest people per lane mile as any in the nation. That's because we've not invested in arterials. We've not invested in other modes of transportation. We've got to do some smarter things. Do I detect just a, a hint of regret when you talk about building subdivisions of the way we do? We sprawl. I mean, it's almost the American way. It is. It, it, how to, A, should that be in any way inhibited, reverse? You can't reverse it, I suppose, but you encourage more urban living. Or is that just going to evolve? I think it has to evolve. Downtown living, I mean, close it. I, I, I think it has to evolve because the basic animal is us. We're still chasing the American dream, which was never more than a single lot that a single family home could sit on. But that's the American dream. No one imagined what that American dream looked like in a subdivision or in a city or in a region where that meant sprawl. No one really imagined that. So we are still chasing that American dream. And for a population that a huge portion of them have just depopulated the rural areas, that's at least a compromise. What we have to do is we can't mandate that all of a sudden that comes to a screeching halt, but we can build more and more good examples and show through the years better examples, better ways of doing things, whether it's Hendricks Village, whether it's the towers in downtown River Market area that is that was repopulating downtown Little Rock like it used to be decades ago that's showing that that's possible, it's viable, it has a good vibe, it has a good feel, and more people will turn to that. I don't think we can just slam our door and say, that's it, we're done. Those people who want to go find a single family ho uh, home and put Fido in the backyard with the swing set and use a two cycle engine and mow the grass, you know, hours on end on weekends, if they want to do that, they're going to keep on doing that, and we can't stop them. Let's we have to it. stop now because we're out of time. Tap Town's a little metro plan. Thank, Thank you very sir. much for your time. My pleasure. Enjoyed it. And for yours, and we'll see you next time. Local broadcast of Arkansas Week is made possible in part by the award-winning Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest major newspaper, bringing you local, national, and international news since 1819. By the Arkansas Times, keeping you informed by covering people, events, and politics in Arkansas. By FM 89, KUAR in Little Rock, with in-depth news reporting, analysis, and discussion each weekday.